Marie has done a lot of work on our garden out here. And I know I've showed you a lot of stuff inside our house, but um, I've never really uh, showed you the garden. So uh, maybe the girls will like to see that, but you guys, I am just fast forward it and we'll get to the unboxing. But this is, this is what we're gonna start out with. And um, as you can see, this is the, the front yard and um, got lots of nice, nice flowers that have uh, come up here. It's springtime uh, today, believe it or not. It's, it's only May 21st, but it's uh, 95 degrees here in New Jersey. So it's pretty warm. But we have uh, the front garden and uh, our porch. We got decorated with uh, with nice rocking chairs and it's uh, it's kind of fun to sit out here and watch the traffic go by. Uh, this street where we live, Main Street, it used to be just kind of a calm place, but um, over the last 35 years it's become a real boulevard, but uh, it's still it's interesting. I, I, I like living in a busy spot because I feel safe here. There's always people around. It's a lot better than being out in the country in the woods someplace where you know so yeah I'll show you some more here we'll go around this side uh, we're over on the uh, side of the house where I have the uh, entrance to my cellar and um, we have it kind of duped out a little bit here with uh, uh, there's some good good comfortable chairs to sit in and smoke cigars and stuff like that and uh, and then this uh, this is the entrance here uh, to my left uh, into the uh, into the lobby which leads down into the cellar so now I'll take you back and, and show you the main garden in the backyard again if you hate this just fast forward it I understand you know, you got to listen to your wife, though, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is the beginning of the uh, of the garden, and uh, I kind of like. Uh, I have there's a guy locally here that he takes um, old American steel helmets and. Uh, and welds all kinds of crazy stuff onto them. I, re I really like the guy on the tank in the middle. <coughs> and then the, um, this is the grave of my favorite cat, CJ, who I had for almost 18 years. And uh, he passed about a year ago and I still feel bad about it, but um, so I can have that little marker there. He's He's buried there. I uh, actually had a carpenter make a, a box for him and everything, so he got the best treatment I could have because he was the best cat I ever had, and I had cats all my life. So, and then over here is um, more flowers and things, and um, uh, up in here is uh, is a portion of uh, of our deck. It's um, it's all set up with uh, chairs for, for seating, and uh, it's a great spot uh, to have a drink at night when the sun goes down. Uh, and then the, the garden continues through here. You can see we have all, all kinds of um, beautiful plants and, and trees. And Don't ask me what any of it is. Marie knows what it is, but I'm not so good at it. But, uh, and then we uh, we can walk down this way. And, uh, each area has certain types of flowers, and it's all kind of done separately. I think they I think they call this an English garden. I don't know, uh, but I like it, and uh, I hope you will too. come down to the center area here 
and um, you can uh, you can look over over here. Uh, this is a uh, a wonderful um, Japanese maple tree that's a hundred years old, um, and it was twice as big as what it is now, but a tree on my neighbor's yard, the top of it fell down and broke half of the Japanese maple tree off. So we were really, um, really sick about it, but um, it looks like it's going to live and it's going to be fine. And you know, you kind of have to accept nature the way it is. That's the way the Japanese would look at it. And, uh, Follow me around. I want to show you some of the interesting um, uh, branches, the way they, they go. Yeah, if you come around here, Rob, and shoot in here, I think it's very interesting. Look at that labyrinth of twisted, that's a hundred years of stuff there. And um, it has a lot of character of its own, I think. So I'm very proud to have this tree. Uh, I understand it was planted in 1933 when a, um, a landscape truck drove by Main Street and uh, this maple tree fell off the back and the people that lived here ran out and got it and planted it here. So here we are all these years later and uh, we thank them for their uh, thievery, <laughs> if you will. But then uh, over here is, um, this is a, a uh, little uh, play shed dollhouse that, um, that we built uh, for my granddaughter Tabitha when she was about five or six years old and um, she's 24 now so she doesn't use the uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me the shed much but um, uh, it's still good for storage and then we'll go around here further lots of lots of nice plants and um, and I'll show you over here we Is, uh, this is uh, my goldfish pond, and uh, I had a, a tragedy with it uh, last summer. Uh, for 13 years I had nine goldfish, and they were all about this big, and uh, last summer in the hot August, Apparently the air came out of the water and all of the fish died. So now I'm starting all over again. I got a got six little tiny things and I hope I live long enough to see them get big like the last ones did. But it's a nice little pond and uh, it's a good place to think about where you're going to get your S, your next SS dagger or something like that. And then back through here is more nice plants. And um, uh, we, we had a, um, a benefit last night um, for um, my son Dean. Uh, one of his friends has the big C, so we were raising money for them. So the bar is still here, but we had a good time. We had about 60 people here, and fortunately the garden didn't get trampled, so we were kind of lucky. But we still got to get cleaned up a little bit from that. <coughs> and then we go around here. More beautiful plants. And nice stuff and rocks. And, and then this leads into a, um, into a little tunnel area, which is kind of interesting. Come through here, Rob. Kind of neat how everything is grown around it, and we can just kind of get through. And then there's a little a little bench here that uh, if you want to rest here and 
consider more on how you're going to get that chained SS dagger or whatever. But uh, and then we come through and I'll take you around to the other side here. We still, uh, this, this is another barn that we had last night for the benefit, so we're still getting uh, cleaned up on that. But, uh, but this is nice. And this is the other driveway. We have two driveways that you come into the house. And this is the nice um, uh, deck we have on the back. Lots of fun to get a group of people and do a barbecue. And, and then we come up here. And, and this area here is very pretty the way Marie has done it. You know, and as summer comes along, we get different kind of flowers. Things only bloom at certain times, so uh, she has a plan so that as one flower is out for the year, the next one's coming in. So uh, it works out. It works out pretty nice. And uh, I guess that's that's about it for the garden tour. Thank goodness, right, guys? So uh, we'll get to. Uh, an unboxing now okay thanks for watching this well hello there collectors here we are again with another uh, unboxing video I hope you guys are all doing fine uh, we're having some good uh, spring weather here in Moorestown and uh, I hope that is the case uh, for the rest of you too um, I'm sorry about that uh, flower garden tour but um, uh, Marie's very proud of her garden and uh, she wanted to get it on video and she thought that maybe uh, some of you guys girlfriends and wives might uh, like to look at it but uh, you can always fast forward it but anyhow uh, thanks anyhow for bearing with us and uh, uh, we'll start the uh, start the unboxing here but of course first we gotta gotta light a cigar Mm-hmm. And as is my custom, first of the day here, guys. Here's to you. Prost. Mmm. Uh, <clears throat> wow. <laughs> I, that was a rough, uh, rough first one. I think I made that one. <laughs> a little bit stronger than it uh, it should have been. Well, that Boy, one got I, you good. I need just another sip to <laughs> counteract that. Uh, oh boy, that Imperial, uh, uh, that was a new bottle. I guess they added a little uh, fresh zest to that one. So, all right, so here we go. We'll start out here and uh, like always, I don't have a clue what's going to be in here, and um, uh, maybe there'll be some surprises. Uh, uh, I don't know that there's anything that's going to be really good, so this might be a, a kind of a uh, an unboxing for um, just getting started or whatever. But uh, but we'll see. I don't know if there's any advanced pieces, but the only way to tell is to look. See what we got here for this first box here. All right, that wasn't too bad. Now we got a little letter here. That's always good. Tell us what's in here. Oh, good. I recognize these bags. So that's a good start there. Usually when we get a dagger bag, there's usually a dagger in it. So let's see what happens here. We shall see. Yes, sir. Yeah, these are, these are nice bags. Oh, here we go. 
Wow, yeah. Yeah, well this is a this is a nice um, early first model look, Waffa. And uh, these have been big sellers recently. Boy, we a year ago we had 30 or 40 of these and uh, today we're scraping the barrel to get any. So um, they're very popular. Uh, this piece has really nice leather on it from what I can see. Um, the sun wheels are pretty good, but most of the plating is worn off in the, in the center of the legs. And there is a little hit there. But uh, you can imagine how that could happen while all that dagger's swinging. I mean, these things are really heavy and it go right onto something and, uh, and that's how it works. Got a good nickel, nickel hanger. Uh, the other side of the leather is really perfect on this piece, which is rare to see because these are these were worn a long time and uh, somebody must have taken care of it. And of course the blade is a really nice um, nickel plated example. Looks like it's in mint condition. Let's kind of see who made it here. Oh, yeah. Paul Wiresberg and it's also Waffen Amped. Uh, Wiresberg made very good um, uh, Luftwaffe daggers, as did SMF too, but I think Wiresberg's quality was really, really good. So that's not bad. That's, we're off to a pretty good start there. Yes sir, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that need a first model Luftwaffe. It's a, uh, it's a basic dagger, but they're so, those early ones are so heavy and they're so good looking with that medieval hilt and all so they've always been um, been very very popular well, let's see what we got here in the next box oh we're getting Luftwaffe to death here it looks like collectors oh but this is a nice one here wow yeah see the staples on that so this is going to be a real early piece um, Amazing the amount of silvering that's still on the uh, fittings, too. Um, and also the silvering is all in between the sun wheel legs, also. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Yeah, pretty good on the other side, too. And uh, the scabbard is not steel. It's one of the composition leather types. That's why it has the staples because there's no steel to put screws into. Let's see what the blade is. Oh wow, look at there guys. That's really nice. It's a real early Carl Eichhorn piece. Yeah, that... Uh, I can't see, but I just want to make sure there's not a... Yeah. Yeah, like I thought, if you look real closely, collectors, I think you'll see a Waffen Amp on the end of that cross guard. You'll see that sometimes on these uh, transitional types. Can you get that, Ob? I think so. And uh, I think there's one on the, on the scabbard there, too. I'm not sure. Am I seeing one there? You think? I think it's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. So this is really a nice, uh, a nice piece, especially with that real early uh, Icorn trademark composition leather scabbard with staples, and then Waffen amps too. So um, uh, there's a lot of meat here uh, for the money on a on a dagger like that. So uh, that's that's a good one. Um, I'm sure there'll be some people interested in that piece. In fact, I'm interested in it myself. It's really nice. All right, so we'll we'll put these uh, down and and see what's next. So at least we're off and running, anyhow, huh? I know you guys all all like to see uh, see some daggers, and uh, sometimes we're a little late in getting our our uh, videos out. I don't know. I think we're maybe one day past a week so we're probably getting complaints so you'll have your fill here mm. oh yeah that's that helps a lot okay let's see what we got next 
this is a real little tiny box. I have no no idea what's in this one either, but let's see. Looks like it could be, yeah, this comes right open. This is not bad. Hope nothing fell out of here. Looks like a letter with uh, uh, something, something about Bill Shea there. I guess maybe he has something to do with this item here. Well, I guess we're still looking. Let's see. Oh boy. Wow, this is some uh, this is some stuff you don't see very often. Wow. Oh uh, yeah, here's one of these um, uh, night fighter, I think that is, or a bomber. And that looks like a good one too. Got to watch those. There's a lot of repros of those things and. Wow, this is a um, this is a Spanish cross, you know, from the um, Spanish Civil War. Um, this looks like a good one too. It's uh, maker marked. Is it maker marked? No, it's not. But uh, wow, that's a and then two. Um, look at this, collectors. Wow, this is really something. Ha! Here's two tank awards, both cut from the uniform, it looks like. Wow. Man, I'm, I'm just curious to see what this letter is. Uh, I think this, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a certification from Bill Shea uh, on the, um, the pair of tank destruction badges. It's a pair that was removed from a tunic. That means that the wearer had single-handedly destroyed uh, not one but two tanks. Each is mounted, hand applied to a square section of tricot weave field gray wool that measures four inches long by three inches tall. There is a moth hole in the material. Yeah, I see that. And there are a few nips and bites as well. The badges have minor wear and some very minor vertigree. Definitely a one-of-a-kind offering. Well, that looks that looks like a terrific thing to me. You like that, Ob? Yeah. And yeah, that's not something that we see very often. Yeah, you're not going to see that too often. And uh, and the Spanish cross looks like a good one too, uh, as does the. Uh, do uh, you remember whether these are bomber or night fighter? I think it's a bomber. I'll have to look it up and see for sure. But but uh, wow, this is uh, this is some uh, some super stuff here. Wow, I'm glad to have that. You like that, collectors? That's stuff that we don't see, uh, especially that uh, pair of tank badges. Can you imagine how that uh, tank man must have felt wearing those? Walking around in Berlin or someplace, he must have been uh, very much admired uh, with stuff like that. I bet the vet felt pretty good cutting them off of his uniform too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Up. Yeah, yeah. The vet probably Screw didn't realize guy, how yeah. good they yeah. were, but uh, you know that's a good point. Yeah, and he did a nice, neat job, so he knew he didn't want to mess them up. Well, I didn't expect to see anything like that. Well, that's that's kind of nice, huh? Okay, collectors, we're moving right along here to the next box. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Let's see what we got here. Well, my Bob Burns trusty cutters are working good. Some guy wrote an email and and said he thought that I ought to have a cutter with uh, 
that's gold with jewels on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know they make a lot of things like that for maybe a cigarette lighter or a oh, cigarette the, the case. Gu the Goering box cutter, you the mean? The Goering <laughs> box cutter, yeah, that's what we need. I wonder if Herman had a, a, a jeweled box cutter. But uh, I agree with that collector. I, I would like to have a jeweled box cutter too, but... Uh, uh, to my knowledge, I've never seen one for sale, but uh, you never know, but we'll see. Let's see here, what else we have? This, is, oh, this looks like a, a possibly an SA dagger here. Very possibly, if I can figure out how it was all wrapped here. We'll take a look at it. Well, I think I'll just try cutting the... Yeah. Cut the bubble wrap down the end and can't go too far wrong. You can never see too many SA daggers, guys. You know, it, uh, they've been really, really, really hot this past year. And, and prices have just been, you know. I like when we get the phone call and it's like, yeah, I have this saw dagger that I'd like yeah, you to look a at. saw <laughs> dagger, yeah, 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 right. Well, that's the kind of calls you like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And my grandfather brought it home from the war. All right, let's see what we got here. Yep, it's an early, early essay. It's, um... Got a kind of a nice grip and uh, nice patination. Nobody's ever cleaned it, and uh, decent anodizing. Maybe a little better on the back than on the front. And it's got a uh, SW Grupa mark on the back of the back of the cross guard there. Uh, but I like the grip and uh, and the fit is really uh, like a rubber glove here. This this fit is really perfect. Um, yeah, there's no there's no sign that this dagger's even ever been apart. That um, that tang nut's got all the you know. So whatever it is, it's uh, it's kind of a nice virgin piece here. Oh, and it has a beautiful blade on it with a real dark SA motto and all the cross grain and is that uh, a washer I see there? yeah there's a washer there and it looks period too <laughs> sometimes you see that up oh, there we go it's one of those popular asculips that's why I like the grip I guess yeah we see an asculip now and again and they're always good to have um, that was the company that usually lacquered their grips also so that's a that's a good piece. You can always use that baby. Yes, sir. I'll put that and we'll go to the next one. Well, I'm still kind of trying to get over those uh, tanker badges, huh, guys? Man, there was something. Uh, let's see what what this is. Doesn't look too hard to get opened here. Oh, there we go. Got some newspaper. Oh. Popcorn again. Ah, oh boy, I hate that stuff. I will try to get it out here without trashing the whole place. Yeah, it's coming, guys. It's coming. Yeah, not too bad here. We didn't make too big of a mess. Not yet, anyhow. I'll probably dump it over before we're done here, and that'll be the end of the... Well, we still got stuff here. Uh, let's see what kind of, kind of stuff we got here. Yeah, well, it's 
says chain and dagger inside. Hmm, that sounds interesting, doesn't it, guys? Chain and dagger inside. I knew something was going to be inside, but I guess he wants to let me know first so that I open it gently. Don't want to screw anything up. Well, we got this baby secure here. Oh, this is this is a tough one here, guys. I'm dying to see what he means by chain and dagger. Oh, I just think I see what the chain is. Here it is. I wonder what's going on here. Oh. oh. Boy, this is a, a strange looking bird here. Uh, no, we got the, and this uh, chain assembly doesn't look right either. That one's a sore thumb. Yeah. Yeah, now we're... No, that's wrong on the back, too. You don't see that shape. And yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the... Um, I guess he's um, uh, sending this for me to um, either authenticate or figure a way how to put his put fake, a, chain, put on his his fake, fake chain on his fake dagger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, while we're looking at this, guys, I mean, you can, for the practiced eye, you'll see right away that this lower scabbard fitting is not correct. Um, the scabbard also is too thin. You notice that, Ob? And this, um, this ramp here is terrible. It's just uh, awful. Uh, and the cross guards are not right either. Why don't we, uh, uh, we should compare it to another to real chain and, uh... Well, we'll do that later. We'll do that later, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the button is fake the also. atrocious. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, the blade is just, I mean, look at that motto. It's awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Yeah, so this is something that um, I'm surprised that anybody would um, uh, would get hit with something like this. Uh, and he's just trying to get the uh, chain put on, hopefully. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, that dagger wasn't worth all the care that he took to, to bundle it up. It's really, uh, really kind of goes in the trash can, doesn't it, Ob? Yeah. Yeah. If I ever saw a trash can candidate, uh, that is it. That's too bad. Well, I, I hope you didn't pay a lot of money for this, sir. Uh, and if you did, uh, perhaps it, um, it can be sent back. Uh, because um, in German this is what they call Scheiß. Uh, and I'm sure you guys probably know what Scheiß means in English. I don't need to tell you. So let's get this off of the table. It's kind of, it's desecrating the whole cellar down here, guys, isn't it? Oof, man. Well, these are the things that happen. The popcorn is uh, worth more to us than the... Yeah, uh, the popcorn is <laughs> worth more than, the, more than the dagger. Well, that's just the way it is, you know. Um, uh, a lot of people, they just jump into the hobby. They uh, Maybe they're at an antique show or something, and they, they see something like this on a table and think, Oh, I heard about that. That's a rare German dagger. It belonged to an SS officer. I've and seen worse. I've seen worse. Let's uh, put it that way. I don't know whether I. <laughs> I'm not so sure. That's about. Uh, yeah. There just was not much there to. Hmm. I mean, there's there just was um, nothing there. Nothing was any good on that piece. 
the, the shell, the scabbard shell was no good, the fittings were no good, the cross guards were no good, the grip was no good, the SS button was no good, and the eagle was no good. And then on top of it, the blade was fake too. So Maybe he bought it from a movie uh, auction or something. A movie auction, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Maybe uh, Colonel Clink was wearing it around. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, collectors. But again, I don't, I don't know what's, uh, I don't know what's going to be in these boxes. Colonel Clink was in the Luftwaffe, anyhow. So, well, I don't know. Boy, that was a terrible dagger. Uh, I apologize, collectors. But you know what? It's good to see stuff like that there there is some real rubble out there and uh, I don't want to get I don't want to see you guys get stuck on something like that because that just um, you know a lot of guys they find out that they they lost their money and they just say ah, that's it on this I'm gonna collect stamps or coins or something but you can get stuck on that too <laughs> so, well, let's see what we got here looks like another dagger I don't know who's making these bags here, but they're, boy, let's see, up, oh. another SA dagger, well, this one's, this one's kind of nice, uh, boy, the anodizing is really, really pretty on that thing, boy, it looks like the earlier one, should, yeah, should we break it out again, no, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not, it's not an asculip, but it is a, it is a pretty, Pretty grip though. Really dark brown scabbard too. It's nice. Yeah, the scabbard is interesting. I, I noticed there is no um, no group of number on it. So uh, that's no, there's no group of. And again, this dagger has never been apart. You can see by that that tang nut. So it's nice and virgin. Well, let's see what we got here. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful uh, motto and blade. The blade is um, stone cold mint. It's really, really nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my, one of my favorite makers, Gebruder Heller with the anchor. Yeah. yeah they uh, uh, they did a nice job. Um, is it me or does that look a little bigger than they usually are? No, that's the, um, you'll see them smaller when it's a Rome dagger. They use the big trademark for a regular yeah. dagger. Yeah, and I think they're from Schmalkalden, yeah, from Schmalkalden, wherever that is. The name sounds so great. Wouldn't you like to go there and say you had a beer in Schmalkalden? Because you probably couldn't even pronounce it after you had the beer. But uh, this is a, um, that's a real, uh, a real prize there. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's nice. It was better than the last one. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, that's a that's a very uh, very fine uh, very fine piece there. All right. Moving right along here. Um, I got a box here of. Uh, this is a bunch of stuff that. Uh, I haven't looked through it yet, even though the box is open, I swear to you, I haven't looked at it, but uh, we'll, we can look at some of this stuff and see if there's anything interesting. Well, here we go, that looks like a nice uh, small NSDAP flag. We can maybe take a look at it, just for fun, because it's not too big. Yeah, it's got a a hoist on it. Yeah, see now that's a real beauty. That's yeah. something that you can display with your collection if you have a, just a small area. It's in mint condition, stone mint all the way through. Very, very nice. I like that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And let's see what's in this package here. It looks like an assemblage of, of small things, but uh, all things that collectors like a lot. Uh, here we have a um, a minefield little flag. Obviously, you step on the mine and you're going to look like that. So you don't want to step on the mine. They had these all 
every couple of feet where they knew there were mines. And there's a real small NSDA pennant, but it's really nicely done. Look how that uh, field is put on there with that elaborate weaving around it. And then it's got two nice brass hangers. That's a real nice pennant. It has a double oval stitching, which you Yeah, see. oh yeah, that's a high quality thing. And here's another high quality piece. Look at that with all the uh, uh, the, bra the black and white stitching around it with a canvas hoist. Um, uh, is this swaz separate? Yeah, this, no, the swaz is printed onto the, where is it? No, that's separate. The swaz is separate Bevo woven into the uh, uh, field. And oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow, finally a real SS armband. Oh yeah, and it's got the um, the cloth tag inside. Um, we've been hurting for SS armbands, Ob. We haven't had one for a long time. And uh, this one is original. We probably won't have that one for a long time either. No. Still got a little of the original stitching from when it was on the uniform. And, and that's got the, um, the white satin uh, field that has the lines running through it and then the swaz is all put on separately. The swaz itself is two pieces of cloth. So that's a that's a real nice thing. I'm happy to have that. And there's just an army helper armband. We see a lot of them. Uh, this is kind of different. It's for a um, Red Cross uh, volunteer worker. See uh, Fry Valen, that would be you know volunteer uh, Santa stock is medical, uh, Red Cross from a town, Hinsbreck. So that's kind of nice. It's not a regular Red Cross. It has a lot more to it than that. Uh, and here's one you don't see much. Uh, this is that special uh, SA retiree armband with the, um, uh, the gray uh, stitching on both ends. That's a good, good item. Let's see if there's anything inside it. No. But that's a good item. And then a Deutsche Wehrmacht um, armband, someone helping the, uh, the armed forces and it's rubber stamped. Uh, here's a wool NSDAP. It's, it's got a few nips in it. I don't know why they don't just nip in the back, but they the most like to nip in the front too, just to wreck the price of it. <laughs> I don't know why, it's the way it seems like sometimes. So that's a pretty good little little grouping of things. I like all of those things. Even like the little mine flag. And then in here also is a, um, a police sports shirt. That's what it looks like from here. Is that what it is, Ob? It looks like it to me. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's a nice one too. I guess because it's green it would be a rural police sports shirt. Boy, it's in nice condition. Uh, I don't know whether there's any markings in it or not. I don't think there are anything but green, as far as I know. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I haven't seen enough of them, but uh, but that's in uh, that's in good condition. Yeah, looks like it's mint. It's very very nice. And let's see what else we got here. I don't know what the devil this is. What the heck is this up? <laughs> God, please, I don't know what this is. It's uh, this is the craziest thing I've ever it's seen. It's a naval man's dance outfit from one of, one of his free time. In red, yeah, in red. I don't know what the look. Could be, could be something. Any uh, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Well, collectors, if one of you out there has a clue <laughs> yeah. what this is, I'd love to know. Does it have a uh? A tailor mark in it, a maker, or anything like that. Inside. I don't see anything now. No. no, it looks like something somebody's grandmother made for them. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but you never know. It might be something that uh, we just have never seen before. But uh, whew, boy, mm. I, I need a ship just to recover from that baby. Maybe from the bands, maybe. I don't think so. I don't know. But and then it looks like we got an array of, uh, of old uh, 
Imperial and uh, K98 bayonets. And then a butcher bayonet in here to boot. And another K98. So we'll look at them later and um, hopefully we got some matching numbers on them and uh, we'll see. But These butcher bayonets are always pretty popular. Oh, this one's got a sole back on it mm. too. It's, it's as though they're not nasty enough yeah. to have a sole back too. Greeting, cheers. Ah, that's a little weaker than the other one. But. Well, we've got another box here. Shall we see what's in this one now, guys? Let's see how the best way to open this. I guess from the top. I'm still trying to get over that red vest with the naval <laughs> insignia on it. <laughs> I can't believe that somebody actually thinks that's something. I don't know, maybe it is. You always see new stuff all the time. No matter how long you've been doing this, there's always something new. So you can't just laugh off something and say that it's no good without uh, examining it and checking around. Mm. That drink's all right, though. That's good. Let's see what's in here now. Some kind of box here. see what's in this box first I guess. I think that's the best place to look first collectors we'll see. This is a very, very beautiful thing. Uh, this is a, um, a Luftwaffe honor goblet. Aaron Pokal, I think they call them, with its original case. And that's really a rare, rarely seen item, especially the case. And uh, let's just look at this. Uh, yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, if you can look down in there, Rob, you'll see that uh, uh, that goblet is um, is a silver hallmarked one. It's not the usual alpaca type. Uh, so that would mean that um, this was probably awarded um, fairly early on, maybe 41 or 42. After that, I think they just made them out of alpaca. Can you hold and, it up? Yeah. yeah, and you can see it has the the two fighting eagles on the obverse of it, and then on the reverse of it is the iron cross, and then around the base it uh, it has a, a German inscription, which uh, uh, basically means for um, for excellent uh, performance, and uh, these goblets were were awarded many times to NCOs um, where they did enough to win the Knight's Cross, um, but they really didn't want to give Knight's Crosses to NCOs unless they really had to, but there were so many distinguished flyers that weren't officers in the Luftwaffe that they, they had to do uh, something for them. Uh, thus the Aaron Pokal now let's see uh, who this is, uh, uh, the recipient's name. Well, I'm, I'm wrong about everything I was saying. This guy is a lieutenant. He's an officer. Uh, 
So maybe he did go on to win the Knights Cross after this. I don't know, but he was, his name is Lieutenant Gerhardt Seidlitz. S E I D L I T Z. And he was awarded the goblet on November 6th, 1941. Oh, I was right, it is an early goblet. Can I see that date? Yeah, I'll. Oh, okay, yeah, that is tough. Should I just turn it around? Okay, and just hold it right there and slowly spin it. Boy, what a beautiful thing it is, huh? The silver ones are really. Uh, you can see the quality right away as compared to the alpaca examples. Wow, uh, what a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's, that's really, really nice. And the case, I mean, rarer than the... Yeah, than the, the case is, is ten times rarer than the goblet. So that's a, that's a, um, that's a wonderful item. And now I wonder what... Uh, what's in these things. I kind of hate to... Oh, that's all right. I'm sure that's happened before. Let me just open this up and, uh, and see what's in here. That's some beautiful goblet, isn't it, Ob? Sure. Boy. Some kind of... Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, collectors, remember I read the name of the recipient on the goblet. Uh, here's the document that was awarded to him. I believe that's the same name there. An original document. Now that's... Uh, That's a really nice, uh, a really nice item here. Um, I don't know what's in these other things here. They, whether they relate to the goblet or not, uh, <coughs> we'll just take a look and see. How do you like that goblet, guys? Isn't that something? And then to have the document besides, boy, that's a, uh, that's a real, that's a real prize there. I like that a lot. Um, that's something that uh, could easily be the uh, the highlight of a, of a collection. Should probably take that document out of there in case the lid comes down again. Yeah, thank You're you. You're right, Ob. Ob's always right, guys. <laughs> He's always got these suggestions to save the old man some money <laughs> and trouble. <laughs> Would you like to tell the story of the time you tried to fit the documents uh, that we were trying to send back to the consigner? You were trying to fit them in a box and... Uh, <laughs> You're telling it. Uh, and what did I do? <laughs> well, they were, they were wrapped, they were placed in a protective paper. And for Dad to make the documents fit in the box... Right. He cut the paper down yep. and forgot that there was a document inside of it, so... <laughs> You're not saying that I accidentally <laughs> cut the document, are you? Yeah, yeah, just about a half inch. I, I, I thought that. that I successfully forgot about that. Uh, uh, that was not a uh, that was not a good day. Uh, yeah, and the good sign. I really loved that too. He was. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a, I had to buy that document. <laughs> yeah. I remember, and it was not cheap. So uh, well, sometimes. Um, when you make mistakes like that, it uh, can be a very costly situation. So I tried to learn to be a little more tactful. Well, in your you defense, it was only one document. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> there could have been more, I guess. Oh, boy, look, here we go. Wow. <laughs> Collectors, you're not going to believe this. There's a document signed by Goering himself uh, to the same Leutnant and awarding him the Aaron Pokal. Tilt it up towards me a little bit. There you go. Boy, it just doesn't get any better than this, collectors. For Look the at presentation that. of the, uh, uh, the goblet? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And see the Goering signature? Sure. 
Wow. Boy, this is quite something. Wow. Let's see if there's any more here. I don't think there's anything left to cover on this, is there? I don't know, there's still something here. There's a couple things here. There's another document. Uh, I think this is for an award of a, um, a Spenga for Kumpfleger. That must be another award that this um, uh, flyer received. And let's, I'll have to research all this, guys. Sorry, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, here's an another another an document. Uh, document. This is to the same man. Um, it looks like the same kind of a yeah. The paper's awful bright on yeah, that. It's I, awful bright. I wonder if they're copies of uh, of what he was awarded or something. I don't know. Now let's see what this one. Although this this one is absolutely original. Yeah, and there's another one. I don't know why there would be all these. Um, and yet another one. Huh. I think these are copies, but I'll I'll check them out. They all well, seem to be the same, don't they? Al? One's bronze, one's for the silver, one's for the gold. Uh -huh. And then the other one is, it says, gold with on hunger? Oh, diamonds? I don't know. Uh, in gold mit on hunger. Oh, that's that thing that hung down from those metals. Okay. You, know, you know the yeah. one I'm talking yeah. about? The, those clasps. Yeah, ultra rare. Yeah, ultra rare. So I'll have to check to see whether these are um, original documents, but uh, but I certainly know that uh, that that one is. It has the seal impressed in it, and I've seen a lot of Garin signatures, and that's his signature. I would think it's just more provenance for the recipient of the uh, goblet. I'm not sure about the authenticity yeah, of those maybe. documents, but how do you like that yes. in the case? Isn't that a beautiful thing? You've seen them in case before, Dad. I've seen a couple of them at the Mac show, but this is the first one that uh, that yeah. I've ever had here. So obviously, this is a this is a very expensive grouping, uh, but well worth it too. And talk about history! Wow, is this something? It's uh, uh, very, very, uh, very, very beautiful and ultra rare and uh, uh, just outstanding. Um, I wonder if these have to do with the, uh, with the, the those frame. Are the, yeah, those are the documents. Okay, here yeah. we go, collectors. We have the original documents. These are just copies. Here's the original examples. It's probably, these are for display because you know how bad this, any right. light will destroy right. a document. And there's the original so, documents, yeah, so there all to the same flyer. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what an incredible grouping of things, collectors. Boy, I'm I'm trying to get over that uh, that Aaron Pokal, huh? Boy, that's something. I I got a couple things that um, walked in uh, last week, so I'll show them to you too. Uh, they're pretty interesting, I think. Uh, uh, the first is a um, uh, an SA dagger. Uh, it's never been cleaned. Uh, but what's neat about it, you'll notice it has the original owners either, we don't know for sure whether it's their SA serial number uh, or possibly, um, what's that other number, I, I forget what they, they call it offhand, but uh, kind of a, a listing type number in the SA. Uh, but then it's, um, it's group of marked uh, MI, I think. And it's uh, it's just a nice uh, untouched piece, and again that uh, that uh, nut has never been turned. Ausweis, that's what I was thinking of. It might be an Ausweis number too. And then when we look at the blade, it's a very very nice um, very nice blade. 
um, and then the maker mark is one you don't see very much Erhard Reich and uh, he was from Schweine sounds like a great place doesn't it Ob? Oh yeah Schweine can't wait to see the women yeah so that's a pretty nice piece I think you guys like that? Um, that maker, by the way, is a number nine on the Mixar scale. So that's so you have not only a rare dagger, but with the uh, serial number there too. That's uh, that's something you very seldom see in um, in SA. Hey, that's cool. It is cool. And here's a uh, an early SS that I bought. Um, it's got a nice um, ebony grip. It's beautiful. Um, Fits the cross guards really nice. Um, everything, I mean, it hardly looks worn in the grip at all. The scabbard is nice and still has a lot of lacquer that's on it. And it also has a very, very nice um, early uh, vertical hanger that must be original to the piece. And you can see there's lacquer on the back of the anodizing also. A little tiny hit to the ball, but not too bad, but it's there. And then the blade um, is not, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. And um, good motto on it. And the, the blade is by um, EP and S. And there's some scratching here or something that uh, happened next to the, uh, to the hammering Siegfried trademark. But that happens. Uh, and there's a um, District 1 a group mark but still it's a nice untouched pretty much untouched early dagger and if you're looking for an earlier one that uh, would be a reasonable price um, that that one will be fairly reasonable and then I don't know what it is guys but uh, I got lucky again this week uh, a collector uh, dropped by here and uh, and left this piece for me. <laughs> it's just uh, oh boy, it's beautiful. Uh, it's an early chained SS, and it has an anodized scabbard, not the painted type, and and all the anodizing is on there. All nickel fittings throughout. A beautiful nickel chain. It's got most of the blackening in the backgrounds. Uh, the grip is absolutely perfect and, uh, and it's got a knot on it too and and then on the back uh, the anodizing is still absolutely perfect and uh, the chain is stamped with the the Kulterzeichen mark there and the back of the grip is also in choice condition and see the blackening in the ramp too. I mean, it's everything you want to see in a chained SS. And then we'll take a look at the blade. Oh, pretty tight in here. Oh, there we go. Ta-da! A beautiful, beautiful blade. With the SS motto being absolutely perfect with all the frosting in the backgrounds. And of course, it uh, it's an unmarked one, like we like to see on these early pieces. So this is um, this is a really um, a really first-rate uh, chained SS dagger. I mean, that that just uh, they don't get much better than that. That's one you can you can keep for life and. Uh, never have to worry about uh, upgrading it uh, so that's um, uh, that's our presentation for this week we didn't get as much stuff as we get sometimes but um, I think it was still enough to uh, to be of interest to you at least I hope it is uh, I just hope you guys aren't getting bored with all this stuff you know it uh, I don't know, sometimes it seems like I'm just rambling on and showing you stuff you've probably seen a hundred times before, but uh, but then again, there's always, I mean, that honor, that honor goblet, I mean, that, that has to wake you up. So that's it for this week, and um, don't forget that the, uh, the great 
uh, OVMS Cornfield Show is coming up in Ohio uh, on, I think it's June the 10th uh, through the 12th. Is that right, Ob? I think that's the dates. And uh, that's a great show. Um, it's, um, uh, it's a show where you can mingle with everybody, talk with a lot of collectors, meet new people, um, have time to get your head about you. And it's even the kind of show, if you bought something that you're not too sure about the next morning, you can go around and show it to everybody and find, get some opinions. And uh, So it's a good show to kind of start out with. I mean, it's not a Max or an SOS, but that's a nice part about it. There's a lot of good things there, but there's time uh, to talk to everybody. So I, I hope to see you there. Um, and in the meantime, uh, uh, good collecting. And thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate all your your nice comments. And uh, and if I can help you with anything, I'm here. See you later.